Hey guys, Keith here. I uh, just thought I'd do a real quick uh, video or quick uh, tutorial on uh, Signal R and WPF Client. I don't really see too many examples out there as far as to deal with WPF Client. I guess not too many people doing the application development anymore. Um, they all seem to be, you know, JavaScript and uh, that kind of stuff. And they're kind of leaving out the whole. Um, WPF applications. Anyways, uh, this is the WPF application on the right, and I connect to a ASP.NET Core server, and the web API, I'm going to call that values controller. I'm going to post up this value to the values controller, and it's going to come and send it back through SignalR to the WPF application. So there it is, and there, and you can change this to whatever you want, and you can see that the application is going to receive that. So if this is something that you're interested in, then keep watching, and I'll show you how I set that up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this. This is the actual project that is completed, and I'm going to keep it there. I'm just going to go through the things on how I... Uh, actually created this. So when I say add something and you see a directory you don't have, just wait and I'll actually tell you when we need to put that in there. Okay. So first thing you want to do, of course, is open up Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio 2017. Um, and once you get that, you'll want to go to project ASP.NET Core Web Application, name it whatever you like. I named mine SignalR Server. Once you do that, um, you don't have to install SignalR. It's already up there. Now you will for the client, but not for the server. So, and that's only because we're using down here is uh, we're using the standard .NET. Okay. So once you get that, um, you want to create your directory hubs, and we'll create a class called I called it Test Hub. So if you name it something else, just you know, name, change that name. Anytime I use test hub, you'll use your name of your hub, of course. Um, the hub it's is from Microsoft.ASP.NET course, signal R, and then hub. So once you do that, I generated all my overrides. You don't have to, but I did. Uh, the one that we're really concerned with is the on connect and connect, connected async. Can't even talk today. Um, so that right there is something we'll put in later and I'll tell you that, um, next you want to go to your startup and go to configure services and you type services, add signal R and then your configure, you want to just app, use signal R and then your routes, you'll map the hub, which is your test hub or whatever you named it and then forward slash test hub. And then that is it for the actual server. So then to make a WPF app, you just add new project. And then, of course, go to Windows Desktop and WPF app. And then you'll just, I just named mine WPF app one. Now, main window, all I have here just to show you what the design looks like, it's kind of, as you've seen at the beginning, it just has a list box and then I have a label, a text block, and then a connection button. And you can look at that XAML right there. Okay. So that's all I did. You can put whatever, as long as you have a list box and I mean, you don't even need the actual label and the text block. If you don't want to, if you don't want to know your connection ID, just a list box and a button would just be fine for this. Um, so then on the code behind in the constructor, um, now before we get into the actual signal R stuff, we actually have to get that NuGet. So go to manage NuGet packages and you're going to install the Microsoft.ASP.NET core signal R client right there. So that's the one that you want to go out to browse. So you'll just basically it's right there. Okay. So when you do that, 
you'll install that and all that stuff will and make sure you do your updates I believe there's some updates that we need at the time of this video so once you get that installed then you're able to go back to the code behind of your main window put a private string called connection and it is a hub connection and that comes from the Microsoft ASP.NET Core Signal our client namespace and then in your constructor we just take that connection make it a new hub connection builder and then we pass in the URL if you don't know where to get your URL you can go up to your server project go to properties in the debug tab you can see the app URL right there I use the HTTPS for this one you can use either one and it'll work okay and you can test that out yourself if you like if it doesn't work for you be sure to comment and we'll figure it out together okay so I just put connection closed just in case it gets closed I'm just going to delay it for a little bit and then try to start it again that's all that does here are my listeners okay which we're going to talk about um, and then here is my put it in a try catch um, it is asynchronous when I start it and then I just add them items to the message or that message to the message list rather okay and then I disable my connection button and that's pretty much all I do okay um, so let's go back to the actual con we'll, we'll do the connection first we'll do the hub and on connect this is where we do our clients caller and we send it async connected now down here that's this listener and it's going to send a string so it's expecting a string from that hub so and it's going to send the connection ID that connection ID is assigned by signal R okay so you're going to pick that up and I just put that text you don't have to have that but that's just what I put just to kind of give me a you know that it's connected okay so next thing is in your controller I just use the standard values controller that they create for you um, to do this I just have an iHub context it's going to be injected by dependency injection so that I just assign there so now the whole class can get it so whenever this post which we've seen at the beginning of the tutorial postman actually posted that to us it posted us whatever that value is and all we do is just call the connected clients so those connected clients will have that um, and that's it so once we run this we have our client and we have postman and once I connect I send and there it is again okay so that's it for me I am actually going to probably get something to eat but you all have a good one and uh, if you have any questions be sure to comment and I'll try to get to them and um, that's it I'll see you next time thanks